Hey guys, and welcome back to the Vocal Booth. We're brought to you by All Sounds. This is episode 29. We've gotten so far, and as always, before every episode, I have to ask because I forget. It's fine. But <laughs> Mason is going to hit you with the new music today, so make sure you listen up and then stream up. Diving in. Okay. Thank you, Rockhampton. They linked with the legend Danny Brown for Buzz Cut. Also came with a really cool, intricate, and versatile um, visual, which is very up Rockhampton's alleyway. Yep. Um, so shout out to Rockhampton for that. Internet Money linked with Lil Tecca and Lil Mosey for Jet Ski. Um, there's also a fun visual for that. They went to Miami per usual because that's the only place that's open right now. Still wear your mask though, guys, and sanitize <laughs> often. Um, Cowboy linked with Lil Wayne for Miseducation. Mm-hmm. Lil Lauren Hill shout out in there too, which was awesome. Paying homage to the greats. My heart. <laughs> um, hopefully this isn't the current state for Russ, but he dropped a single called Bankrupt. Um, I, I, I don't think it is because he's very self. He's doing good? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been doing his stuff very independently all around. So keep going, Russ. Hopefully you're not bankrupt. Also, complete side note from that. I have to say this, though, because you mentioned him, that he literally tweeted about, like, oh, imagine if TikTok came out when Nicki Minaj was, like, bigger. And he's, like, think, like, Anaconda and, like, all these other songs. Oh. Imagine how crazy TikTok would have been. And I'm like, you're right. I don't think the world would have been ready for that. No. So shout Speaking out to of Anaconda, that. that specific track, I think it just like broke a record for Nikki too. Really? Yeah, like she's like the first female. Don't quote me on this, but I'll get back to you guys next week. But I believe <laughs> I saw that. I'll come back to it. That's crazy. Shout but out anyways, Nikki. And Young Money. <laughs> yeah. Coyle Ray linked with Pooh Shiesty for Big Purr. I've seen that literally everywhere when I yeah. open up on every platform for like the past month. So they finally <laughs> yeah. dropped it, guys. So you guys can run that up as, as Kayla said. Uh, Remy Wolf linked with D- Dominic Fike for Photo ID. Mm-hmm. It was the remix. It was a lot of fun there. Um, if you guys haven't heard of Remy Wolf, make sure to check her out. She's got a bunch of cool energy and just a lot of fun visuals. Um, designer came out of the limelight. Whoa. Yeah, back, right? Literally didn't even know that. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Designer. He dropped uh, the single and visual for Amen, which was a lot of fun. Um, it was. I wouldn't say it was necessarily something... That was so out of the ordinary. It was just a, <laughs> a mansion, a, a mink, you know, nice co- nice cars. The typical. Yeah, but yeah. it's still designer coming with the energy. I mean, he got co-signed by Kanye West when he was, what, 18? Like, yeah. come on. So, shout out designer. Major Laser dropped Music is the Weapon, mm-hmm. Reloaded. Yeah, it's fire. Listen to that. Bump it. <laughs> I've also seen this one everywhere, too. Rod Wave dropped Soulfly, which has been skyrocketing on the Billboard charts since it dropped so make sure to run that up thanks to kayla for this guy too nf and clouds yeah. or N- nf dropped clouds the mixtape yep listened also, it was great yes also <laughs> has that song with hobson on there which was crazy um little shout out to manny mariquin on this one uh 24k golden dropped el dorado mm-hmm. his debut album uh, manny mariquin helped executive produce that bad boy um there's a Perfect. lot of Thank you. A lot of crazy <laughs> features on there. Uh, some really big names. So shout out 24K Golden. This one was nuts. Vic Mensa. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chicago. He dropped, I believe it's one tape. The EP. I tape. I tape? Awkward. It was like, it was like V tape and then I tape. Like Roman numerals Vic. always make me kind of <laughs> sideways. Sorry, Vic. All love. Thank you to the Save Money family. Um, you can see our XTs in the visual yes. for freedom fe- featuring Zakari. Yeah. Courtesy of TDE. And that is a wrap on all that new music, folks. So much new music. So much to stream. That's what you have for the week. Mason's here to give it to you. Um, but this week, on week 29, we have such a special guest. He's so important to all sounds and to us. Just icon is Damon Sharp. The. <laughs> hey. The. <laughs> yes, always put the D in front well, of Well, icon. <laughs> I'll take the icon. I don't, I don't see it, but thank you. No, I say icon. I say... <laughs> Anybody to me where you're like vibe with them every single time you see them, you're like, dang, that's just a good person. Okay. To me, that's what like I There got. we go. You're doing what you need perfect. to do. You do a lot. Yeah. You put a lot in the world. And it's perfect. It's perfect. Nice. <laughs> nice. But thank you for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me. I just have to piggyback on the music thing. Yes. It's kind of crazy when you I never thought about it this way, but in hearing how many things came out, mm-hmm. you realize how dependent now artists are on collaborations. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you only named, I think, maybe two artists that didn't have one or more collabs with mm-hmm. them. So we're living in such a world. And I remember back in the day, like when it was like 
it was n- the opposite. Like you would be like, oh my God, so-and-so is partnering up with so-and-so. Mm-hmm. They're going to do a record together. Yeah. And now it's the exact opposite, which is fun because then it makes everything an event. And then you see like, you'll have like a reggaeton record with like 10 artists. They're like, exactly. Anita, Daddy <laughs> Yankee. And it just gets like this, Becky G. You're like, okay, wow, it's still going. It's still going. <laughs> so many but features. it makes it fun. It makes it, it makes it like an event. And it, it whether so that way, if you're a fan of one and maybe not the other, you're still going to probably go stream the record and check it out. And so. integrate. And I feel too, it's, it's big because you're integrating so many different genres as well. Like people are doing these collabs and all of a sudden you have these really dope like trap songs with reggaeton yep. or this anything. And it's like, wow, these are vibes that you would have never heard. Also, yep. 100%. It's crazy to think that it's, you know, we've been on lockdown and how many collabs have come out on lockdown and like the yep. shift in the way people yep. are creating and doing music well, that way. Well, it is a shift and it isn't. So weirdly, most records that I've had in my career mm-hmm. that have had like features on them, they never come to the actual studio. You just so sent you it off. Yeah, yep. and then they send you back a wave file and you import it in. Mm-hmm. And everybody thinks somebody and this is a funny one too. Um oh god, what was the huge collab with Eminem and Drake and uh, Lil Wayne? Forever? Oh forever. Yeah. For- it was forever, yeah. yes. So LeBron I heard James a story, thing. and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but they said that um, everybody recorded it remotely. Yeah. And I don't remember which artist it was. One of them heard the other person's rap. It's Kanye. Kanye heard Eminem's. He's like, oh my gosh. I, I, he had to, he had I to write for it. Yeah, I gotta yeah, redo yeah. it. Because <laughs> Em's was just fire. Yeah. And honestly, like, even to this day, I love all of them. But I remember when that verse came in, I was like, game over. He just literally, like, yeah. that's it. And there's not, it's not really a competition, yeah. but there was just this level of confidence and his and his cadences mm-hmm. were just he, he's one of those people that for me always comes with a fresh cadence yeah. and that's rare i mean I, I, funny enough you said nf i was listening to nff nf earlier at the gym i don't remember which single it was but i just noticed like he's the same way like every like yeah. every his verse mm-hmm. he gets to another section the cadence switches up and it just keeps you in the moment you know what i mean as opposed to some of the I'm not gonna downplay anybody, but there's certain people that will just do that same. You're like, oh, really? It's cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah. The like same, same, same flow, yeah. same like, yep. uh, do, it, 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 And it's common. You don't have to call anybody out because it's everyone. I'll put the, I'll put the, I'll, 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 yeah. I don't need another triplet. Like, give me yeah. something more original. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it works. Hey, it's everybody got their sound. So that's what I say. I laugh all the Go time. With I'm it. like, <laughs> We hear the same thing over and over again, and I get mad at myself because I'm like, why am I listening to the same song? Or there's times where I'm like, wait, is this the same song? Oh, this is a different nope, song? Oh, yeah, this is, okay. Yeah. So, but but it like, works. It's like works. Even, even Drake understands his brand and pretty much stays in a lane, yes. but it doesn't get old to me. Like Because every time you're like, oh, it's a Drake song, like it just feels, even though it's kind of, you've kind of heard it, but it still feels refreshing. Yeah, yeah. it's like something you know I want to do. Yeah. Oh. Um, More captions incoming for everybody. Yes, but I swear. I we're going to switch this mode and go straight to you because right. you have done so much back to the land of cleveland and, there you go. <laughs> and right. it's like we gotta learn like who you are and what you've done so take it away mason sorry no worries um i mean yeah shoot uh <laughs> born, we know born in cleveland raised yep. in phoenix yep moved to la when you were 15. That. wow phoenix and your intro was you were a dancer so yeah, weirdly, weirdly enough, yeah. I mean, that's what I started as. I just mm-hmm. I remember as a kid, like I would see all these movies with dancing and break dancing, and I, mm-hmm. I remember telling my mom, I was like, I want to be a street dancer, and they were like, Okay, well, we don't really know what that is. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Give me some cardboard, and, <laughs> and then I just started, you know, Quick me and my boy. brother would start dancing, and then ended up taking actual dance lessons. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because I um I was taking the break dance lessons, and then the teacher who owned the studio came in. Her name was Julie Ren. She ended up kind of like basically kind of poaching me and making me into more of a dancer outside of just street dancing. Mm, yeah. She grabbed me, she's like, she's like, would you ever think about taking jazz dancing? I'm like, ah, I don't know if that's for me. I feel like that's maybe more for girls. And she's mm-hmm. like, come with me. And she grabs my hand, she pulls me over to the window where they're taking class. And it was all girls in there. And she's like, you see all those girls in there? I was like, yeah. She goes, if you take this class, you get to talk yeah, to all those girls. And yeah. I was like, that part. Like, all right, I was like, where do I sign up? <laughs> yep. So then that was the beginning of me doing, you know, all, like competitive dance and everything. Yeah. Coming back and forth to LA to do competitions. And that's kind of how I got my foot in the door because even when I would be out here, there would be auditions. I would go do it. I, then I booked a Disneyland commercial. Then I booked a, uh, you know, a Nintendo commercial. Then mm-hmm. I booked, you know, so then at that point I told my parents, I was like 14 or 15 at the time. I was like, can we do a trial run in LA for the summer when school's out? Yeah. And they were, and my mom was like, yeah, let's do it. So my mom came with me and my dad stayed with my brother and sister in, in, uh, in Arizona. And uh, it just connected. I started booking jobs, and then they're both teachers, so they moved to LA so I could pursue my career. So that's crazy. You know, so sick. Everything. That's yeah. so sick that they're able to just uproot. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and weirdly enough, to this day, I still 
not every time, but when I'm in the creative process, especially if I'm by myself, mm -hmm. everything comes from a dancer's perspective. So I'll start with drums or a bass line, mm. usually over cor a chord progression, just because that's how I, I feel, feel music. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it still, it still ties into this day, you know? And I feel like that's a perfect transition. Like I wanted to ask, so you went from dancer, what made you want to go into music? And what was like, I have to ask this to everybody, but what was the first thing when you're like, I want to become a musician, I want to do something in like music. Like a turning point? Yes, yeah. and then you're like, Oh, I want to be a producer. Oh, I want to be a songwriter. I mean, I was always kind of the nerdy guy behind the scenes. Like even when I was, cause I was signed like seven times as an artist. Um, yeah. Even when I was in like my first incarnation of the horrible boy band I was in. <laughs> um, I was always the dude that was like behind the scenes. Like, oh, what do you, oh, I want to, what is that? You know, I always wanted to know yeah. if with the producers and the writers, what the process was. Mm. So I, I, even back then I was kind of already dipping my, 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 my foot in the water. Um, and then, you know, as things kind of progressed, I was in another, my second boy band. <laughs> of like many. You have um, to name these boy bands. Oh god, the, the that. best, the best name. I will tell you, the best name <laughs> was the one that never came out, and the name of the band was the Unheard of. Wow! Wow! <laughs> so so How cliche. It was a self fulfilling <laughs> prophecy. Yeah, it just never came out. Exactly. It was crickets. Um, but no, during that time, I met my mentor, a guy by the name of Rick Wake, who was like literally the biggest producer and writer of the late 90s into the early 2000s. Okay. And he kind of took me under his wing and uh, in, more so in the boy band capacity. And for three years, we went through like multiple labels. And then at the end of it, uh, we got offered a deal by Warner, with Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And I know at that point, after three years of kind of like grinding in this boy band, yeah. I was kind of done, to be honest with you. And we were on a, sorry, I know I keep going away from the mic. Um, he, we got, we had a conference call with our attorneys and they were asking us, you know, about the deal with Warner Brothers mm -hmm. and it was going to be like a $25,000 advance for each of us. And at the time it was a lot of money to me. I was like, oh my God, this can like change my life. Yeah. Um, but I just knew in my heart, it wasn't the right situation for me. So I passed on it and then fast forward, I'm broke. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I need to go on un unemployment and this is granted, this is the second time in my career that, I, that I'm broke. So. And what age is this? Uh, in my twenties. You know, so I. So what time where you're like, I need the money. Yeah, like, heck yeah. No, yeah. I mean, but the first go around, which I kind of skipped and I'll kind of rewind. Um, right after I came out here to dance, I booked a TV show and a, and a record deal. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like a rip off of like New Kids on the Block. It was yeah. called Guys Next Door. No, but I saw I, that. I was but ask. I still love it. It's like, you know, we had board games and dolls and yeah. all that sort Nick of stuff. Knickknacks, punch boxes. Exactly. Yeah. Like buttons, covers. We were on the mm -hmm. cover of all the teen magazines. And, you know, we kind of went from overnight to like whatever, whatever, for lack of a better word, like teen idols. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then to fast forward, like a year and a half later, it got the show got canceled, the record deal got repealed, and I always tell people I literally went from taking pictures yep, with Will yep. Smith to serving, serving him, a him a Pepsi two years later. That's crazy. And it was it was a crazy life lesson. So at that point, again, I'm broke. I went from making six figures to being completely upside down on unemployment. Um, and then, like I said, I was granted to a second chance, and only after, like I said, I was in the second boy band, back on unemployment. And then I got a call from Rick, my mentor, and he goes, dude, I found this CD on my desk of songs. He's like, there's some really good songs there. He's like, you wrote these? I was like, yeah. I said, you know, I've been telling you for three years I want to write and produce. <laughs> you always looked at me as the boy band kid. Yeah. Um, and he goes, well, let me, let me run some of these songs. I'm going to pitch these around and I'll get back to you. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, thinking I'm never going to hear back. Mm -hmm. So I hang up the phone. Sure enough, about a month later, he calls. He goes, bro, I got a couple of your songs cut. And I was like, and again, I didn't really understand what this meant, right? Yeah, I didn't understand what a song that. placement was at yeah. the time. So he's like, yeah, do you know who uh, Jennifer Lopez is? And I'm like, yeah, at the time she was, you know, she had like, if you had my love and waiting yeah, for tonight, yeah, yeah. let's get a little bit. She wasn't J-Lo yet, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, no, I like her. I, th I, th I think she's, I really think, I don't think she's dope. And then uh, he's like, she wants to do your song, Why'd You Lie to Me? I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he goes, do you know who Anastasia is? And I was like, no, he's like, she's blowing up overseas she wants to do your song love don't cost a thing like okay cool and then kind of crickets and you know i'm just like because i didn't really know at that point and like, he goes, what do i do what yeah I, he's yeah. like he's like well hold on he's like i'm gonna get back to you i just want to give you the good news i'm like okay cool again hang up the phone thinking i'm never gonna hear back yeah. then about a month goes by and i get a call but not from rick i get a call from my friend who's an intern at a label and she's like damon did you do a song for jennifer lopez and i'm like i i think i did and she's like go to the newsstand right now pick up r, &R magazine flip over to the back there's a picture of J-Lo on there. It says, love don't cost a thing in your name. And I'm like, what? So I go to the thing. Sure enough, I pick it up. I flip it over. Love don't cost a thing. And you know, granted, like I said, I thought Anastasia was doing love don't cost yeah. a thing. Mm -hmm. So I call Ricky. He's like, yeah, bro. He goes, I didn't want to say anything because I don't like to jinx things until they're set in stone. And I, I actually operate the exact same way in my yeah. life. So mm -hmm. I got it. And he's like, he's like, yeah. He goes, it went from, from switching hands to Jennifer not wanting it to making her record to this week going to radio. 
So once that went, it just, within two weeks, it just blew up. All the people that weren't checking for me and were kind of like clowning on me were blowing me up. Like, oh, we want to sign you. We want you to, we want to do this deal with you. I was like, nope, I'm doing a deal with Rick because he yeah. had my back when nobody had my back. So that just started my run. And now it's been almost 20 years of, of writing and producing for everybody from J-Lo to Ariana to Pitbull to Legends and, you know, like Natalie Cole and Celine Dion and John Legend, all, all sorts of people. And, you know, it's been, a, it's been a crazy ride. And the past... Three to five years have been another reinvention period for me now. And, you know, I, I started, I have always had a love for dance music and EDM and, and always like kind of DJed as a side thing. But about three to five years ago, I just started working with tons of, you know, whether it was producing or writing with different DJs like Alesso and Morgan Page and a bunch of dubs and a bunch of these big people. And my attorney kind of like got up my ass and was like, dude, why are you not the artist on these records? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, you know, I, I, I've been doing this so long. People aren't going to view me like that. He's like, no. He's like, you just need to go, you know, you just need to do it. He's like, if Brand you do yourself. it, yeah. And, and I had been told that by a lot of people, but I never bought into it, right? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let me try this. And I locked myself in with a DJ mentor and just started getting my skills back up to up to par for about a year. And then boom, it's certainly as soon as I started doing that, then all of a sudden I started having, you know, a featured artist credit and then a co-artist credit and then a mainline artist credit. Yeah. And now I'm 50 million streams as an artist in, you know yeah. what I mean? Outside of my... Ooh, yes. Let's take, take it in for a moment. Hold on. Um, and that's outside of all my streams as a producer and a writer, exactly. which are probably you know over a billion now or something like that. Yeah. Um, so for me, that was really vindicating, and it's it started a new chapter for me now. I'm now signed to Armada Music, and uh, it's it's pretty insane. I've got like crazy uh, collabs coming up. I've got one with Loud Luxury. I've got one with Sid. I've got one with Vivid. Like all these amazing people that are so cool to work with, and uh, it's been a crazy crazy ride. You know what I mean? That's just getting started still. And know? this guy tried to be like, Icon, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, so I did this, 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 and this, 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 this. Icon? Question mark? <laughs> Understatement. <Okay. laughs> Understatement. <laughs> Unheard, man. Yeah, for real. That so. list is just so insane. Like, even from, I had to mention this because my little siblings used to watch it. Yeah. You worked on Big Time Rush. Yeah, so it's funny. So I almost I spent I spent almost five years with them. They're, they're like my little brothers. They're still all my best friends. Word. Um, I came in to do one song initially, mm -hmm. oh. and I I said to them the day we were at, I think we were at the record plant or something or like a really cool studio. And I was like, hey, I was like I was in a group just like you guys. And they're like, yeah, whatever, buddy, cool. Oh, and, then, and then wait, hold on. Then it gets better. Then the next day Shots I come back fired. in to do more vocals, and they're like, dude, we looked on YouTube. You're exact. You were in the exact same thing as us. <laughs> so once we had that bonding moment, then it's like we came really close friends. Mm -hmm. I ended up doing probably, geez, at least 15 or 20 songs over, over a period of four albums. Yeah. I went on tour with them three times. We had our own, at one point they gave me like the, the entire recording bus to myself, oh, which geez. with a recording bus in the back and then the guys would just rotate and come off and on the bus and, and we'd write the songs That's and record the songs. So yeah, that was a, a really good time in my life. And actually it just started airing on Netflix. Really? Yes, yeah, yeah. so we should give them a shout. Oh, so yeah. Go watch it, all the reruns are up. <laughs> All my songs are in there, so I gotta pump Hit up it. our man no. Gustavo. <laughs> Which is funny, because I'm not a really big like boy band person, but I was obsessed with Big Time Rush, and they played at the Orange County Fair one year, and uh. I remember like, it, and I wasn't like young at that point anymore. Like, I wasn't like, <laughs> oh, she was screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my God, that's funny. Like, oh my God. Bruh. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> I get clowned on all the time here, man. <laughs> Also, another sibling shout out. Uh, my older sister Estancia is infatuated with Chicago. So mm. your work on that soundtrack. Yeah. So that's a that's a thank you. That's a, that's a funny story too. I'll, I'll try and make it keep it short. But so basically, <laughs> um, my mentor Rick, who I mentioned earlier, yeah, what, he got assigned to do the entire soundtrack, right? Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, I didn't really get the gravity of it. I don't think so. He was like, you and Greg, who was my writing partner at the time, Greg Lawson, shout out. Um, he goes, you guys go to see Broadway, uh, go see Chicago on Broadway. So mm -hmm. he gives us two tickets and we got like front row seats and we're sitting there. And I remember leaving going, that was cool, but I just don't know if people in this day and age are gonna care about this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get excited and I wasn't really working on it like I should have been, right? So then one day Rick was like, dude, come in my office. And I'm like, all right, now come, I come in and he and he puts um, the video on of the dailies. If you know what dailies are, it's basically like the raw footage shot on mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I was like, holy crap. I was like, this is gonna blow up. You could just yeah. tell by seeing it. I was like, the aesthetic of it was so mm -hmm. good. And then after that, I just went, in, I went hardcore, I just started doing all this stuff. So I ended up doing the uh, the remake of He Had It Coming, which had Lil' Kim, Macy Gray, and Queen Latifah on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also did an original song on there, with also with Anastasia, who, who I talked about. Some people in the US don't know who Anastasia is, but she's sold about 40 million records worldwide. She's mad, she's like Kylie Minogue or, or Robbie Williams, where pretty much everywhere but the US, they're arena, no, arena facts, type yeah. artists. 
So yeah, I did a song with her on there. And that actually, that was actually ended up going number one on the dance charts. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Shout That's out crazy. Anastasia. Everybody pronounces yeah. Astancia, my older sister's name, that way. So oh, how funny. giving you a shout out, Anastasia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right. Um, I know we gotta we gotta jump a little bit, but you brought up Armada. Mm -hmm. What is just like that new era looking like? Also with like Brain Jack Radio yeah. and like all that going. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. So so Armada, they've, uh, I've always I've been working with them for off and on for about eight or nine years. You know, Word. producing and writing for their artists. So mm -hmm. when it came time for me to do my own project, it was just kind of an obvious you know an obvious step. Michael and Urian and Yaron mm -hmm. and everybody over there have always just kind of embraced me. Yeah. Whereas in the world of pop and R&B, especially in the music business, people get a little judgy and jaded. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, it was such a fresh thing to go over to Amsterdam and work there. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh my God, you worked on this. That's so cool. Let's get in. You know, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a polar opposite feeling and it's, it's actually really a nice feeling. So yeah. that's been really cool with that chapter. Um, and then, yeah, Brain Jack Radio, it's uh, Damon Sharp presents Brain Jack Radio. It's, it's monthly on Insomniac Radio and then it's on obviously on all, all platforms. Mm -hmm. I've had like really sick um, guests on there. I've had Morgan Page, I've had Sid, I've had a, a ton of really big disco fries, a bunch of big DJs. Every week I, I feature like a 15 minute mix from each of them in mm -hmm. addition to the music that I kind of, you know, that I uh, uh, curate yeah. for, mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. each episode. And 99% of it is all pre-release stuff, so you can hear it before it is actually out. Very nice. Perfect. Yeah. That's huge. I feel like no, that's dude. such a big switch. And then, like, I just have to ask, too, because you've done things for movies and mm -hmm. you've just done so much in different facets. Yeah. What, I don't want to say what's your favorite, but what is something Man. that you, like, prefer? You're like, I loved working on that. I would do that every single day. That was something that I was just like. You know what? I think for me, like, for a long time, I called myself, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. But then I realized, I looked at a lot of my peers that over the years have kind of had to go into other businesses, you yeah. know? And I think that's part of the reason why I'm still here is because I've always kind of had a wide scope and I'm like, wow, I love doing this. And guess what? I love doing that. So, you know, I remember back in 2013, I was kind of getting a little burnt out. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I got a random call from Canada. They're like, we want you to come be a judge on a show here. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up for an entire season doing a show called uh, The Next Star Supergroup. And I was yep. kind of like, you know, I was kind of like a knockoff version of Adam Levine. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was on like YTV or something. Right? Yeah, YTV, yeah, which YTV. is basically the Nickelodeon. It's, yeah. it's the Nickelodeon of Canada. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, Nick yeah. content air. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I did that for about, you know, about a year and a half. And it was a blast. And it was just, it was kind of needed, you know, because yeah. every once in a while you get a little burnt out and mm -hmm. you need refresh. A little switch up and even with COVID it's been nice because I was traveling like a madman like 2018 and 2019 I was in China and Amsterdam and London and Romania and just all over the place and then when everything skirted I was like okay now I can take some studio time and focus on just creating and family time and you know just get a little more balance in my life yeah you bring know? that refresh back yeah exactly I always I always say like refresh the creative well yeah you know what I mean because some people don't especially when I was new when I first started and started getting some success I'm like you know, three songs a day, you know, 18 hour days. And it's mm -hmm. like, you just, at some point you just hit a burnout and you don't yeah. understand that if you just balance yourself, like, I don't, you know, the artist Sia, like somebody, I've never worked with yeah. her, but somebody said she only writes. I like, can't see you. She, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, she only, she only writes like, <laughs> um, she only, she only writes like three days a week because yeah. she wants to be fresh and sharp when she comes right. in and you don't play her the idea until she's ready and she jumps in the booth and then she just comes from the heart and comes with ideas because she understands it's about balance. Your, your creative mm -hmm. well has to be filled. You can't just constantly be beating yourself up. Mm -hmm. You can only talk about, uh, there was a point when I felt like every track I did sounded the same. Every concept sounded the same. Every time, every You're just melody. About that before. I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, am I ripping off from like an old artist or am I ripping off from myself? myself. Yeah. Like, you know? I have to say too, and just in life. Borrowing, like borrowing, really... not ripping off. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Um, I think in life too, it's really important to have these refreshes, whether you're creative yes. or not, because yes. one, you have to gather new experiences mm -hmm. or else things become repetitive. They yep. become, oh, I feel like I'm doing the same thing or, oh, I feel like I'm not able to create something mm -hmm. new. I'm getting burnt out. I'm getting tired. You don't give yourself that general time to just refresh, whether that's limiting per week or, hey, say I go hard for a couple months and then take a month off and just really yep. enjoy mm -hmm. myself. Yep. Um, you get burnt out and like you said, you get repetitive. So I yep. think it's so important that you said that and, and that yeah. you do it. You know what I mean? You're like, hey, even if you don't notice in the moment, like I think I'm getting burnt out and then all of a sudden it slows down and you're like, yep. okay, yeah, I needed that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> With that being said, would you say that would be like a tip you'd give your younger self? Absolutely. I mean, there's Word. a there's a few. There's okay. a few tips that I'll if give you. If you don't mind myself. sharing. No, absolutely. And it's so funny you said that because I was just thinking of some things. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, let me that. For like upcoming artists wait. and stuff. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I think when I first started in the business, I would I got to travel to like all these amazing places mm -hmm. and I did not take advantage of it because I felt like I had to be in the studio. And I remember one of my best friends, Lindy Robbins, we went to Sweden and London, a bunch of places together, right? And she was always like, Damon, let's go. Come on, let's just go check out the city. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I got to be in the studio. And now I look back on that and go, God, if I just would have 
it, I probably would have written Better. more amazing songs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and you live those experiences. Yep. So now when I travel, I'm like, hey, okay, cool. We're going to work from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And after that, I'm done. I'm going to have a nice dinner. I'm going to go check out the city. I'm going to go out to a club. Whatever right it is, on. I'm going to enjoy it. Life. You Embrace know? it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I remember I went to China in 2018 and we went and got, saw the Great Wall of China. And then I was in Romania and I got to go see Dracula's Castle. And Stunning. those are all the things that you, I think you have to, you have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the biggest takeaway that I think I can give people is also the once you realize, and you only realize this, I think, as you get older, is stop worrying about what everybody thinks. The minute you stop worrying about trying to be too cool, worrying about what everybody thinks, like it's a game changer. Yeah. Like it's a game changer. And not don't worry about being like self-deprecating to yourself. So when I'm in sessions now, I throw out the worst ideas, <laughs> but it's great because then at some point you find the good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't you can't always just like, I'm not sure, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you're just like so in your shell. Keep throwing things at the wall too. Exactly. Like, and who cares what people think? Honestly, like that's Perfect. the <laughs> Exactly. That's unfortunately the the beautiful and and cur it's, the, it's the beauty and the curse of social media, right? Because mm -hmm. we all, oh, we want to, oh, we want to look perfect. We want to be retouched and our plastic Gotta get me on this angle. And, yeah, we got to get <laughs> in this. And then you realize it's like, for who? Like, really? Like, why does it Why does it matter? Like, just be yourself. And I think that's why so many people relate to certain artists and certain celebrities because they're more, at least for me, if I see somebody's like real yep. and, the, and it's not staged, I'm like, I'm I, them. Like, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I go with mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. I... I just appreciate that. You know what I mean? It's like that. Yeah. It, it's more relatable. Well, like you said, especially in an age where everything is so instant and you look on social media, it's all perfect and you find these comparisons. And I laugh because you do see people say like, oh, I like I love that person because they're so real. OK, but then you still idolize the others. So it's yeah. like just because yeah. it's like people love that. Yeah. They love that yeah. look, but then they don't attach to it. Right. So it's like right. very ironic that you say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, very much so. And then I was gonna say before, go ahead and close out. And then I was like, sure. Um, final one. I'd say like, what was your first concert in CD? Ooh. Oh dang, that's tough. That's a. Um, oh, you know what? My first, my first concert, and I can't believe my parents let me go because I think I was like eleven or twelve years old. I was mm. super young. Um, Depeche Mode. Was wow, my, was my first concert. That was your first. Wow. Yeah. At eleven. <laughs> well, I was I was kind of like a weird. I was I, I was all over the place. I was like a jukebox as a kid, right? Yeah. So I would listen to like Michael Jackson, and then I would listen to Depeche Mode, and then I would listen to like my parents' old records of like Stevie Wonder and like mm. the Rolling Stones, yeah. and you know, so I was I was kind of this amalgamation of all these types of genres. So you know, I met, that was one of the first ones I went to. Um, Gosh, I can't even remember some of the. I mean, I've been to some crazy ones. I've seen some really cool, like classic people. I didn't get to see Michael Jackson, which I'm bummed about. Yeah. Um, but I've seen Beyonce. I got to see Beyonce at like a private event, which was really oh, cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, geez, I saw Whitney Houston when she was still alive. I would have loved. That. I saw. I didn't get to see Prince. That bums me out. Um, who else, man? There's so many. Got to I mean, see the Super Bowl performance though that's true right. of my song that's true no. <laughs> yes that is no and that's funny too i know we have to wrap up but so i was kind of bitter because i thought she wasn't going to do my song because one of my best one of my very close friends uh kelly she she is one of um j-lo's wardrobe people right yeah. mm. and i was like so is uh, her stylist basically i was like i was like is um is j-lo doing my song she's like let me look so she starts looking through all the looks and she's like oh i don't see it on the track list and i was like oh dude, screw her like i'm not gonna watch, I'm not gonna watch this then right <laughs> so Lost my viewers but then all of a sudden I'm sitting at home and uh, I start my phone starts blowing up and I'm like oh crap so I turn it on and it was too late I had already missed it yeah. um, so I just watched the replay but what had happened was that because it was like a medley yeah. there were just outfits allocated for when the song you know changed so, she so didn't I didn't realize but yeah I, and, and everybody's like of course she's gonna do that song that's like one of her biggest records but it that's was still a cool moment even watching it back not live I was like mm -hmm. wow this is very, like very surreal that has like, to feel yeah yeah and it's also cool because there's certain moments like certain things that I think that my family and friends are gonna be like, bro, that's so cool, congratulations, where they're just like, oh yeah, cool, whatever. But like that was one where even the people like, because I think like this, the Super Bowl relates to like everybody, right? Yes. So it's like yeah. even grandpas and like construction workers. And, yeah, so mm -hmm. they're like, oh my God, you have a song in the Super Bowl, you made it. Yeah. But no, it's yeah. like, what about my handicap <laughs> award else. and this other stuff? <laughs> it's all like, it's all nothing. But, Irrelevant. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, Really quickly, product spotlight. It's spring. Spring has sprung, guys. And All Sounds is here with the color waves. We got red. We got gold. We have gray, which we didn't put because, you know, it's not like vibrant spring. Um, but definitely, <laughs> meh. But definitely go check it out. Um, you can get it at allsounds.com, Best Buy, Walmart, Target. Amazon. So many Guitar places. Center. B&H. Newegg. Um, so many places. 
all of them. <laughs> go do it. All go buy it. Um, Perfect. And Mason hit us oh, yes. with Mason's yes. anthem of the week. Ooh. Of course, of course. It to be. <laughs> There's a password oh, on that. No worries. I remember it. Um, it happens to be a remix of none other than, then, but it is "Don't Save Me" with mm. Darko and the Tyler Graves, and it's a remix by Damon Sharp. <laughs> yep, yep. Thank you. Of course, of course. Um, it was kind of crazy because I actually met Tyler at. Um, we have a mutual friend, Danny Gastro. Shout out, Danny. Okay. Um, he had a birthday party, maybe two or three months ago, but her house is massive and beautiful. Uh, the, like, the funny thing is I did the remix, but I've never even met her. Oh my gosh. Really? Okay, yeah. well, we'll have to link that because she's really cool. <laughs> right, right? <laughs> Shout out Tyler. But yeah, that song is awesome. Sick. And the visual for it is really crazy too. So, What gets you to do a remix? Like what makes you like, oh, I want to... Well, uh, Darko's like one of my homies, and I mm-hmm. actually did a really cool live set with him last year. We did like a Back to the Future theme live set, That's and we had like yeah, we had like a DeLorean. Mm-hmm. And, like, so it was it was a fun um, it was a, it was a fun <laughs> yeah. for for Back to the Future Day. Yeah. So yeah, we've just become friends, and and we've done some collabs together that haven't come out yet. But mm-hmm. we uh, oh, we did one called Sushi, which was me, yeah. Darko, yes. and yeah. Bijou. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're almost at a million on that one, so hopefully that will keep that will keep going up. And uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, just it's different. If something gets inspires me, then I then I want to jump in and and, and do Be a part remix. Of it. Yeah. 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 Nice. Cool. Right on, right on. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that is a wrap on episode 29 of The Vocal Booth. Thank you so much, Damon Sharp, for coming Thank you. on. Thanks Where for can me. we find you? Yes, you can find me pretty much at Damon Sharp with an E on all platforms. I think Facebook is like official Damon Sharp, but everything else is at Damon Sharp. And then Spotify is obviously just Damon Sharp. Cool. And and then t- and this Friday, I have our, our whole remix package coming out for my single Lost Years. Uh, Disco Fries did a more kind of slap house vibe. Uh, Jung Hyun from Korea, he did like a, a like a future house version. Mm-hmm. And then Cubicore did like a really sick trance uh, version of it. There you go. You yeah. heard it here, yeah. man. <laughs> Mark um, those calendars. Well, you can find me on Instagram at Caleb L. Trendy 7. You can find me on all platforms at It's Mason Ezra. Thanks for hitting the like and subscribe button here on YouTube. Make sure to do the same thing on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. See you next week, folks. Bye, guys. Perfect.